Hello and welcome back to another PHP tutorial. So here we're going to be talking about 20 essential PHP array functions. So the array functions allow us to access and manipulate arrays. So they're essential for our workflow. So we can use these array functions on simple and multi-dimensional arrays. And luckily the array functions are part of the PHP core. So we don't need to install anything separate here. We can just start using these functions. Okay, so first up we have sort. So here we're going to sort an array in ascending order based upon the values. So if we print that out now, you can see that now we have the numbers in ascending order in the array. Now we can also put that in descending order. So if we use the R sort, and then go back into the browser, we should now have descending, and there we go. So importantly, we can use both indexed and associative arrays, so both can be sorted. So here we can ascend and descend the order on indexed arrays with sort and R sort. And here we have A sort and K sort based upon whether you want to ascend a, an associative array based upon value or key. And likewise, if we want an associative array in descending order, we can use the AR or KR based upon whether we want to ascend or sorry, descend based upon the value or the key of an associative array. So in this example, we take an associative array and we use the A sort in order to display this in ascending order based upon the value. So here you'd imagine it would now say 11, 27 and 33 in that order. So if we just move this around, so 51 and then 37, now display that on the screen. So here we have Joe, Jules and then Joe in ascending order, 33, 37 and 51. So the K sort, so if I change the A to K, that should now be in descending order. So if we try that, you can now see it's been swapped and now it's in descending order. So next, the list function. So this is a really useful function to allow us to assign variables as if they were an array. So take this example here, for example, we set up a simple array with A, B and C, and then we use a list and we reference the items in the array with variables A, B and C. So now what we can do is echo out based upon these new references, A, B and C. So let's see what that looks like on the screen. Numbers A, 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 B and A, C. So if I wanted to, now I can just select items or some of the items in the array. So for example, if I didn't want to output C, for example, if I were just to remove that and only wanted A and B, well, now I can just display A and B, for example. So lists allow us to assign variables to the array and therefore we can access the array and output the information or specific information to the screen or to deal with that information separately. So when we're using a list, we have to be careful to reference all the items. So for example, if we wanted to output A and C only, then here, if we miss B, for example, so if we did this, we would only be selecting A and B. We wouldn't be able to select A or output C. So here we have to include the comma to reference the fact that there's three items here. And now we can access A and C. We Put those into these variables and output the variables. So A and C. So an array can obviously store similar values. So there might be an occasion where you want to count how many times an attribute occurs in your array. So here we see we have in this array V, two Vs and three mics. So we can use the array count values in order to determine how many Vs are in our array and how many mics, for example, are in our array. So if we have a look at that, we can see now we have two Vs and three mics in our array. 
So next we have the merge function. So you may have two arrays which you want to make into one array. So the array merge will allow you to perform that action. So here we have array one, A and B, and array two, C and D. We then merge it utilizing the array merge, and then we use printr just to display on the screen. So here we go. So now we just have one array with A, B, C and D. So here we have array merge recursive, which works similar to the array merge, except here we might want to perform array merge recursive on an associative array. So here you can see we have two arrays, A red, B green, and C blue, and then B yellow again. So you can hit, see that in both arrays we have this reference or the same key. So if we wanted to remain, or we wanted the keys to remain once we've merged, we could use the array merge recursive. So let's see what happens when we use that. So you can see here that we have this array A, red, and then it makes a separate array within B, and then it referenced both green and yellow. And then we have C, which is blue. So that's array merge recursive. So here we have a very popular array function, array pop. Here we can remove or delete the last element of the array. So in this case, blue. So we use array pop on the array and then we print it to the screen. And what we have is array red and green. So we've removed the last item blue. So next up is array product. If we wanted to calculate the product of the array, so here two and five, we could do that by utilizing the array product. So here we have the outcome of 10. So five and five, the product of five and five is 25 and so on. So if we wanted to add a new number, five for example, we could find the product of that now, which is of course 125. Of course you wouldn't want to mix this with strings and numbers. Um, the outcome here would just be zero. So next up is the array push. So here we can add elements or insert elements into the array. So the original array includes A and B. So we're gonna array push to the array A, um, the items C and D. So you might imagine now in this array, we have A, B, C and D. A, B, C and D. So next up is the array rand. So here I've got an array here of items A to E. Now I can output these items in a random way. So here I create a, a array rand, place that into a variable random keys. And I'm gonna echo out three items at a time. But these are gonna be three random items from this array. So let's just see that in action. If I refresh, you can see each time I'm outputting random elements from the array. So next we have array replace. So here we can replace items from one array and create a new array with the replaced items. So here we have a base array of orange, banana, apple, and raspberry. And we replace it with array zero pineapple. So array zero pineapple here. And then the array place three or position three, zero, one, two, three, we replace with cherry. So now we should be able to output a new array um, which is going to have banana, uh, pineapple, banana, apple, and cherry. So let's just see that in place. And there we go. So the output is a new array, pineapple, banana, apple, and cherry. The array reverse function simply just reverses the item in the array. So here we have Volvo, BMW, and Toyota. So here we can reverse, and you can see now we have a reverse order. We can also use array search. So here we can search for, in this case, a key based upon a attribute or a value that we have in an array. So here we use the array search and we're searching for the, the key for red. So here what's gonna output is A. So the key for red, the value red is A. So if we run that, we now print out A. 
We can also use slice, array slice. So here we can grab a slice of the array. So here we define the array we want to slice and then the number. So this number here represents where we want to slice from. So zero, one, and two. So here we're gonna slice from two upwards. So what's gonna output here is blue, yellow, and brown. And there we go. Of course, if we change this value to one, this is gonna be zero. So this is one, so one, two, three, and four will get displayed. There we go. So it is possible not only to slice parts uh, from the top or the bottom, we can also slice from the middle, for example. So here we're gonna slice from one, zero, one, and then we're gonna to slice to two, so zero, one, two. So what's gonna output here is green and blue. There we go. So obviously a very popular function is the count function. So here we'd simply just count how many attributes or elements, sorry, there are in the array. So here we have three. So the output here, you would imagine will be three. So finally, the last function is in array. So here we can look for items that might be in the array. So here we have a simple if else statement and we utilize this with in array to check to see if we can find a match. So there is a gym in this array. So we then search for gym. So we should find a match. There we go. Obviously there's no one called Al in this array. So here we should return obviously no match found. So there we go. Okay, so that was around about 20 essential PHP functions for you. Um, there are plenty more to look up. So I've given you a few examples and hopefully they'll be useful in your next projects.